So good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Anindita Nandi Watabyal, Assistant Professor in Nutrition and Dietetics Department, Parul University. Today, I am here to introduce Dr. Uh, Vijay, Dr. Vijayata Singar. So today, we are pleased to welcome our very special guest, Dr. Vijayata Singar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Food and Nutrition, Faculty of Family and Community Sciences, the Maharaja Sajira University of Baroda. So Dr. Singar has over 12 years of experience in teaching and research, in addition to eight years of experience as a diet counselor. She has more than 11 awards to her credit, including Young Scientist Senior Award in Community Nutrition at 45th National Conference of Nutrition Society of India, uh, Nutrition Society of India on her uh, November 2013 for her research work entitled Healthy Eating Index for Adolescents, HEIA, Development and Evaluation. She was invited as a researcher for four international interdisciplinary symposium held at Oxford, Tigley, Cambridge, and London between 2017 to 2019. She is also the General Secretary Food and Nutrition, uh, Food and Nutrition Alumni Association, the Maharaja Sajirao University of Baroda, since July 2017. She was also appointed as club convener, Baroda Club under Indian Dietetics Association Gujarat chapter between 2014 to 2018. She has worked as an executive committee member of Indian Dietetic Association Gujarat chapter between 2010 to 2014. And today, she will share her expert opinion on women's health, a holistic approach. Therefore, I am requesting our moderator Priya madam to welcome her. Uh, good morning one and all present here. Uh, Vijayada ma'am I, I would like to uh, welcome you uh, for your uh, for shedding some light on the woman issues and uh, I really uh, am here because of uh, her efforts and thank you so much and ma'am once again a warm welcome to you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Anindita and Ms. Priya for uh, introducing me and thank you for welcoming me. First of all, I would like to thank Parul University for giving me this opportunity to talk to your students regarding women's health, which is one of the most important issues. If we are able to take care of women's health, we'll be actually taking care of the 50% of the population, which is actually very important, which is actually the crux of the whole society. So thank you for inviting me. I'm really sorry because I'm not in my office today. So I'm sitting at some other place. So please uh, just uh, apologies for the environment and other things. I'm just sharing my time. Is my screen visible to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm here today to talk on women's health, a holistic approach, which is actually a topic quite close to my heart. Uh, in person, I've been talking to a lot of people about women's health. Why is it important? Why should we be, be supporting women uh, in staying healthy, not only uh, physically, but mentally and socially too? So uh, thank you for giving me this topic, Priya, and uh, I hope I'll be able to do justice to it. Surely, ma'am. So as we say, girls and women, uh, women are drivers of the development. So we can see all 17 SDGs. We plan to achieve these uh, goals, but without focusing on women, it would be difficult for us to achieve these. So these uh, SDGs, along with a focus on women will mean progress for all. This is something which most of you would be knowing, but I would like to again talk about it. Uh, WHO has given this definition of health, which is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely absence of disease or infirmity. So we have to be uh, healthy with our uh, 
mind, spirit, as well as body, not only body, because as nutrition people, we mostly focus on the body aspect or the physical health aspect, but we should equally focus on mental and social well-being. So as we can see, uh, a girl goes through several phases in her life uh, till uh, old age and these phases are not general growth phases. There are specific phases like pregnancy and lactation where, are huge, uh, where there are huge demands for nutrients as well as for mental support and even social support. So there are different stages where which a woman goes through. Along with it comes uh, several health issues like weight, uh, mostly weight gain nowadays, arthritis. There are a lot of women who uh, complain of arthritis uh, after 40, 45, 50 years of age. There are several reproductive and sexual health issues which women face, osteoporosis, breast cancer, anemia, PCOS and many, many more. So these health issues are mainly because of the uh, changes in the hormones that are occurring like i uh, like this image shows you uh, what a woman undergoes during just one menstrual cycle that is the 28 days that you see these hormones going up and down changes in comparison to what a man goes through throughout his life cycle so what a woman goes through in a month a man goes through in this whole life cycle With all these health issues and all these hormonal hormones going up and down, we are multitasking. So, if we uh, like, I just put these two images because I find these two good. One is I'm multitasking. I'm thinking about cleaning while lounging here, and we fabulous. So, we all of us are capable of doing it. We are uh, doing all different. Uh, we are fulfilling all our responsibilities properly. But this can only be done when we are healthy. A lot is expected from women also and we are able to fulfill that even. But we need to keep ourselves healthy. So, as uh, Sarah Kim has said, a lot of us are always making demands of ourselves and pushing ourselves to be useful and better. And that is admirable. But your health and happiness shouldn't be an afterthought. So we need to focus on our physical, mental and social well-being along with fulfilling all our responsibilities. As Lord Buddha said, to keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we shall not be able to keep our mind strong and clear. So if we want to fulfill our, all our duties, we need to take care of our health. And which is not only the physical aspect, it is the mental and social aspect as well. So, what is important for achieving and maintaining good health? Uh, if you want, you can write in the chat box. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to see it here or not. Uh, yes, ma'am, you will be able to see. Uh, all of you, please uh, answer the question in chat box. Okay, let, us, let me reframe this. What is important for achieving and maintaining good physical health? I'll just check it. Supriya, so, are we getting answers? Okay, self-love. Sumina has mentioned proper diet, regular exercise. Okay, uh, I go back to my presentation. So Snehal, you are absolutely correct that we need a proper diet. Is my screen visible to you? Yes, ma'am. It is visible. So, we need a nutritionally adequate diet and regular physical activity. So, the only difference, like, say you are absolutely correct in saying proper diet, but we need to, as nutritionists, we should mention that it should be a nutritionally adequate diet. 
and regular physical activity. Physical activity is seen uh, like it's performed by many people, but it is not regular. So these two things obviously will help us in maintaining good physical health. Because most of you are nutrition uh, from the nutrition fraternity, I will not be focusing more on nutrition. I'll just uh, go through those slides in uh, fast so that we can focus more on mental and social health. So, uh, what are the benefits of nutritionally adequate diet? You age better, better, live longer and healthier, and you save a lot of money. So, a nutritionally adequate diet helps you in managing weight, reducing heart diseases, uh, improves your bone and teeth health, improves blood flow to the brain, so your cognitive development is good, your brain functioning is good, it increases your energy levels and it also helps in reducing stress. What are healthy foods? Foods that will give you a good amount of carbohydrate proteins, vitamins and minerals. So uh, we mainly have three main functions of foods, uh, providing energy which is mainly by the cereal grains and the products that we get from cereal grains. In cereal grains we should remember we should have whole grains and there, is, there are other groups like sugar and jaggery and fats and uh, fats which give us energy which have to be taken in moderation. Then the second function is of bodybuilding, which is performed by pulses and legumes, milk and milk products, and meat, fish and poultry. The third group is for providing protection, that is, uh, which provides us vitamins and minerals, which is vegetables and fruits, and we should clearly remember, we should have 300 grams of vegetables and 100 grams of fruits daily, and it should include 100 grams of green leafy vegetables special. So the key is that we should have variety of colored foods in our diet. So try to add variety, try to add different colors in your uh, food so that it improves your uh, vitamin and mineral content from the diet. Water, although it's not a nutrient, but it is the building material. And therefore it is required at least uh, 6 to 8 glass, uh, sorry, 8 to 10 glasses per day of water should be consumed by us. Some small points like where uh, the problem is with most of the people, even though we are from nutrition, uh, there are a lot of people uh, who uh, have some unhealthy habits or do not uh, take into consideration the way we, have, we should be consuming food. I've just added some points, I'll go through it quickly. Eating habits, we should be eating uh, slowly, chewing our food uh, properly, we should have food frequent meals, we should not be skipping meals which is very important because many of us do that and whenever we are eating we should have small meals not large meals so we should try to avoid overeating. One of the major issues with uh, our country is we have huge portion sizes so we need to reduce those portion sizes. Another important point is breakfast, which I mostly cover up in most of my talks is because I consider it as one of the most important meals. Not I consider it, it's actually one of the most important meals because after a long break of 8 to 10 hours, you, your body needs fuel, your body needs energy. So for that, you should have a proper breakfast. Apart from that, breakfast has several benefits. It has also been seen, people who skip breakfast are usually overweight or obese. So breakfast, that is why it is the most important meal, but we should try and avoid uh, high amounts of sugar, because high amount of sugar will actually dip fast, and then it would make us more hungry. So we should have a proper mix of foods in our breakfast, at least four food groups, milk, cereal, nuts, and uh, that the food is safe to consume. The environment again is very very important. Nowadays what we do is by eating, uh, we mostly do not watch TV nowadays. Everyone has a mobile or a tablet. So uh, that should be avoided. We should avoid reading also while we are eating. It should actually be a family meal time so that you can enjoy. So it's a part of social health also when you sit with the family and eat. You are able to enjoy your meals as well as it has a better effect on your, on your health. 
Then uh, number of meals, as I said, we should have small frequent meals, so at least four to six meals in a day, and which should be uh, like three well-rounded meals and one or two healthy snacks. Processed foods, we all know we should be avoiding. We should be avoiding it because it is high in calorie, fat, sodium. It is very low in fiber. I remember when we conducted the study in schools, these children uh, were asked, like, do you think uh, fast food, especially like burger and pizzas are healthy? They said, yes, because it has vegetables. What is the amount of vegetables in pizza? And but the kind of thinking uh, children have is that because even if it has small amount of uh, vegetables, it is healthy. Which uh, should be taught to people, we should always keep in mind what are the unhealthy things that are there in a pizza or a burger. It has refined flour, it has a lot of cheese, a lot of fat. So we should try to avoid these foods because these can cause a lot of health issues like obesity, hypertension, heart diseases, diabetes, cancers, etc. So are there any healthy snacks? Name some. Quickly. Children, please type your answers in chat box. Yes, Vandana has written sprouts. Yes. Fox nuts. Okay. Okay, poha. Thank you. So in a good idea, soy chat, uh, soy, uh, soy chat is a very good idea. Any kind of seeds, again, someone has written bandana. Okay, apple. Is my screen visible to you? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. So yes, there are plenty of them, like fresh fruits, sprouted beans, nuts like almonds, cashew, walnuts fruit shakes or smoothies and many many more so it is not that there is a dearth of uh, healthy uh, dearth of uh, healthy snacks we should try to be innovative as nutrition people we should always promote healthy snacks and ourselves should try to eat it okay so another aspect of food is that it uh, can help us improve our mood so if we are well hydrated, if we are getting enough amount of protein, if we are having right kind of fats, which is omega-3 and omega-6. Omega-3 especially which we get from oily fish or uh, our soybeans, flaxseed, etc. And omega-6 which you get from your poultry, eggs, etc. These two types of fat will, in your diet or in your meals will improve the quality of your diet. and will also act as a mood enhancer and it also has several other benefits so for boosting immunity because during covid times this has come up like something uh, everyone wants to boost their immunity so we need to tell them have lots of water we can infuse this water with our basil atulsi uh, cinnamon clove ginger mint lemon etc for the added health benefits of these herbs or uh, these spices. Nuts and oil seeds again because these have healthy fats, zinc, magnesium and protein. These will help us in boosting our immunity. The spices, herbs and seasonings, the fermented foods which actually improve the bioavailability of vitamins and minerals that we consume in our diet and it also helps in improving the gut health which is associated with a lot of health benefits. The fruits and vegetables and if we are including whole grains in our diet, these are some of the ways of improving our immunity. And it's not very difficult. We can easily, but these are not uh, those foods which you have to go out and purchase. These are available in your house and you can use them frequently. 
Coming to the second aspect of physical health, that is physical activity. So, uh, physical activity, uh, although everyone, uh, anyone you go and ask will say that physical activity is important. But are they performing it? Mostly, no. Or they are not regular. There are several reasons for that. They can give several excuses, but we should be uh, very clear. A good diet along with regular physical activity will help in maintaining physical health. Not only a nutritionally adequate diet or not only physical activity. Both together will help in uh, being physically healthy. What are the benefits? You must be knowing. I'll just go through it fast. So it helps build uh, and maintain healthy bones and muscles. It reduces your risk of developing obesity and the other NCDs. It reduces the feeling of depression, which I'll come back again to, uh, in the next section. And it also improves your sleep. There are many in your age who are actually complaining of lack of, uh, not lack of sleep, uh, basically insomnia-like symptoms. They do not, they always say that uh, as soon as I go and hit the bed, I'm not able to sleep. It, I take time. And this time is increasing. Uh, every decade, this time for people is increasing. The reason is we are uh, distracted a lot. So sleep also plays a very important role. If you are physically active, it helps you uh, going to bed. Uh, sorry, not uh, going to sleep early. There are uh, different types of physical activities: the daily chores, the exercises, and the sports activities that we 